So John Murta and Richard Arnold have spoken out about Manchester United's difficult start to the season and obviously frustration over what's gone down in the transfer window. Casemiro looks like he has got injured on international duty. Eric Tenog is thinking about dropping Andre Anana, according to some reports, but I don't think he will just yet. And then we've got another takeover update, which I think is a little bit repetitive, but we will dive into that. So hello and welcome back to Alice Talks Football. Welcome back to the latest Manchester United news today. But we're going to sum up all the news coming out this morning in about 10 minutes for you guys. So we're going to start off with what Arnold and Murta have come out and said. And basically, I actually, it's excuses. It's excuses. But I like that they're kind of showing that they're backing the manager publicly. I think I was worried it was going to get to the point where um, loads of leaks came out to try and make Tenag look bad and, and all of that. So to try and get fans to turn on Tenag instead of the Glazers, you know what they do. Um, but it actually looks like they are backing Tenag, which I'm happy with because the problem at this club isn't the manager. I've said this, look, I can be critical of Tenag. I don't like some of the substitutions he makes. I don't quite like the style of football we're playing. But the problem at this club is not the manager. You get rid of Tenag, you bring in Pep, we still have problems. Until those at the top change, this club will always be a mess. I will always say that. But so that's why I don't want the manager out. Anyway, it was set by John Murta. The mixed results um, achieved so far can partly be explained by the fact that 16 first team players have been injured or unavailable for periods since the start of the season. This represents two thirds of the strength. And that means that Eric Tenark hasn't been able to choose his best 11 once this season. Fortunately, some injured players are starting to return, which should make a difference, which is true. This is the one thing I, I will give Tenog. Um, I, I'm Tenog in because one, he's not the biggest problem. The people above him are, and nothing will change for the development are. Two, he's had so many injuries and stuff to deal with. And three, last year was probably our best season post Sir Alex Ferguson, third place, a trophy. We saw what he could do, and I generally believe if you give him the backing, you give him the time, he will be able to build on that. But it's going to take competent rebuilds. It's going to take good summers, unfortunately rebuilding United is 10 times slower than rebuilding any club because Liverpool can go sign Gavin Birch, Endo, McAllister and Sobersly, get four midfielders in one window and completely rebuild their midfield in one window, whereas Man United can only buy one midfielder a window, one attacker a window, one centre-back a window. When, you know, we need to sign multiple players. But I do feel for Tenor because I think at the end of the day, yes, like we've not been playing with this brilliant style of football and Tenor has been at fault in some games, just that I think his substitutions, um, I sometimes don't get them. He's not been able to play a strongest 11. He's been missing players all season. The injuries we've got is in, is completely a different level to everyone else. Um, and I think, you know, you see the media going in and in and in on Ten Hag. And it's like Arteta was allowed to finish 8th, 8th and 5th. But Ten Hag's had a really good season last year. He's been poor, had more injuries than anyone else. And I feel like people are already, you know, going in at Ten Hag. Anyway, John Murta did say we're also looking at why we've had so many injuries to improve prevention in the future. Some of them are impact injuries like Kobe and Ahmad, who, which are unpredictable. Others are muscular and could reflect the volume of matches played over the past year, including the World Cup. What he means is basically we can't do anything to stop impact injuries. Any injuries as a result of impact from Maino, from Ahmad Diallo, that, that's, we can't do anything to stop that. It's just luck. But he's saying the problem is most of the injuries are, are volume uh, are muscular injuries which basically, if it's a muscular injury, it's it's basically overplaying them, not warming up properly, not coaching properly, not rehabilitation, rehabilitating, is that a word? Rehabilitating them properly, all of that stuff. Basically, for me, we need to get the right coaches in that can match Tenog's intensity. We need to get a good sort of strength and conditioning rehabilitation team in all of those kind of stuff. Um, we need to, obviously, Tenog needed to rotate more. I do think the lack of rotation did cost Tenog a little bit there. There's multiple reasons for it, but I think the facilities being behind, the coaching staff being behind, not making many changes, having the same medical team, you know, not making upgrades, not bringing people that Tenog wanted for the medical side. I think Tenog doing lack of rotation, the World Cup, I think there's many factors behind it. But the injury situation at this club is, is, is getting bad and serious changes are needed. And I think, you know, this is partly on Tenog a little bit, just from, I think, overplaying the same players and lack of rotation. But I think he's started to learn um, already, Tenog. I can already see him sort of making changes and all of that as well. Now, we're going to get into what Richard Arnold actually said as well, because Richard Arnold said a few things. And Richard Arnold said, John Murta and his team have put in place a clear long-term squad strategy, which guides our decision at each transfer window. We knew there would be a transition, but I share the group's frustration of, uh, and fans uh, because the results have not lived up to expectations so far. So this is what I didn't like that was said. 
Um, him and Murta are going to want to put in this long-term strategy, which guides their decisions at each transfer window. Um, la -di -la, they said, look, they understand frustrations because results haven't gone our way. You know what? Richard Arnold and John Murta should not be dealing with Man United's transfer window. We should have had someone like Paul Mitchell, Ralph Ranick, those kind of people. We don't. Now, I will give one thing. Richard Arnold and John Murta, did they want to bring in a centre-back for Tenog? Yes. Were they allowed to bring in a centre-back for Tenog? No. The one sympathy I have with Richard, uh, Richard Arnold and John Murta, and this is the only thing I'll give them credit for, is the pure fact that they would have brought Tenog a centre-back if they were allowed to, if the Glazers had allowed it. But it's so annoying that our strategy is, and they're saying we've got this clear long-term strategy. Arnold and Murta are saying we've got this clear long-term strategy, and that... But our strategy is, um, OK, three players, three major signings each year. Our strategy for the last 10 years that Oli had to agree to, that Oli exposed, is three major signings. He got Anana, he got Mount, he got Hoyland. He had to get Amrabat on loan because he'd already had three major signings. You know, if once you do three major signings, everything else is basically a loan deal. And let's be honest, we're in a position right now where we need two centre-backs. We need a long-term replacement for Casemiro. We need an Ericsson replacement, someone that can retain the ball in midfield. So we need two centre-backs. We need two midfielders. We probably need another right winger. Martial will go. We'll probably need another striker. And then you could argue we need a right back. So we're in a position where we need about six signings. For me, six to seven signings. So, you know, if we're going to do this three major signing strategy, and if we're going to continue that strategy, it's not going to work. And I really hope that Arnold and Murta and whoever whoever they're in charge stop this three major signing a season strategy and i don't think it's down to arnold and murder i think it's down to the glazers because this it was the same strategy under wood with three major signings three major signings three major signings but he did say look the results have not lived up to expectations so far so i share the group's frustration and you know what bring us some good signings in january and bring us qataris and we'll be a lot less frustrated but enough of listening to Arnold and Mercer, because I really don't care. What is the other news coming out? So essentially, Rob Dawson of ESPN said that Eric Tinog was open to making changes in goal if Andre Anana's form doesn't improve. Um, I don't think that Tenog will, unless Anana was like horrific. I think that Tenog's going to back Anana. He's a signing, and I'm going to back Anana as well. It's all about confidence as a goalkeeper. I think you've got to continue playing him and hope it wavers out. You know, we've had De Gea have bad periods and good periods. I think confidence is a big thing. Do you remember that? There was a period where everyone wanted De Gea drop for Romero. And then, you know, like two months later, De Gea was back to his best. It's those kind of things as well. Now, it was said by the Brazil manager that Casemiro did ask to come off versus Venezuela due to a blow to his ankle. There's a feeling that maybe Casemiro has picked up an injury. We don't know how serious that is. I know Casemiro has been poor, but we need him. He's an important player. So fingers crossed it's not a serious injury to Casemiro. Um, that he has asked to come off, which is annoying because I just did a tweet yesterday basically saying, oh, my God, like, yeah, Man United have got all their midfielders back fit after the international break now, Mano's back, just for Casemiro to get injured. But obviously, let's get into this last takeover update saying Man United takeover talks are very advanced after update out of Old Trafford as well. And this is basically an article that dives into all of that. Now, I think it's just repetitive news, but it is the latest on the takeover. And every single day, someone goes, Alice, what's the latest on the takeover? And I'm like, well, I don't think it's anything new, but this this is this is this is essentially what it says. So let me, let me get this up for you guys. It was said Manchester United remain in advanced talks with Sheikh Asim Ben Hamad Al Thani um, and Sergio Macliff as journalist Ben Jacobs has provided an update on the potential takeover while speaking to Gibby Sport. Um, it was basically said for almost a year now, the Glazers have been in discussions to try and sell Man United, but are yet to find a solution with Sheikh Yassim and Ratcliffe both um, competing to try and secure a stake in the club. Um, but there are conflicting reports to who is leading the race because Bloomberg claimed that Ratcliffe is the front runner, but the Qatari outlet Al Kass say that Sheikh Yassim is the front runner. And I read somewhere that if you lie in Qatari media, you get in a lot of trouble. So, you know, I don't like it would be very dangerous for them to make it up. Uh, the Times have also suggested that Sheikh Yassim isn't willing to raise his five billion offer to um, uh, to the club, which I think is the problem. I don't think the takeover goes anywhere until Sheikh Yassim um, ups his offer. I don't know what you think. For me, I think surely the Qataris, they need to up their offer for it to go anywhere, because if they were going to accept the five billion offer, they would have accepted it four months ago. But then with poor results off the pitch, with the value of the club declining, maybe there's a feeling that the Glazers will have to go and accept that. I don't know. They're greedy. I don't think they will as well. But it was that he's still committed to acquiring 100% of the club and all of that as well. So what kind of update did this provide? What did Ben Jacobs say? Well, it started off by saying the investment reports don't 
uh, appear to be going away, which is undoubtedly a good sign for those United fans who are looking for the Glazers to sell their stake. They're saying, as far as we're aware, the takeover is still on, basically. We don't think there's any situation where the Glazers take the club off the market. However, they said which way the Glazers are going to go, that remains to be seen. Uh, ben Jacobs suggested that Shaker Sim and, and Ratcliffe are both acting as preferred bidders and are talks are very advanced with both groups. The journalist um, adds that Ratcliffe has more negotiating to do in terms of his bids, whereas Shaker Sim is simply just upping his bid. So essentially what was said is the situation with the takeover is uh, Ratcliffe and Shaker Sim are in the most advanced stages. They've done all the talks. They've been through the process. And Ratcliffe will have to do a few things like reconstruct his bid, sort things out, and it could be approved. The Qatar is in a position where everything is done. All they've got to do is just up their bid and it can go through like, boom. Do you know what I mean? Like, they don't have to do any like long process or anything like that. They've done all the paperwork. They've done all of this. They've done all of that. They up their bid by a couple hundred million. Boom, they're through. Whereas Sir Jim, you know, he he's in the same position, but obviously because he's not buying 100% of the club, because it's less simple, he would have to completely reconstruct a deal, have loads of meetings with them, and then they might put it through and be like, boom. Now, he said basically in his own words that Shaker Sim doesn't really need to talk. He just needs to put down an offer. If it's not set to 100% of the club, he needs to go higher, basically saying um, um, that Qatar needs to go higher, where Sir Jim would have to negotiate a structure which since day one has been much more flexible, but it will be a lot more complicated to sort out. So basically saying that Sergeant Ratcliffe's bid will be a lot ho harder to sort out. Um, obviously, Sergeant Ratcliffe is now pivoting and exploring a situation where he might start with a minority stake and, event and eventually get uh, full control of the club. But this will now result in back and forth um, uh, speaks with the Glazers and obviously could cause problems with non-Glazers shareholders just because it's very complicated. So although Ratcliffe's proposing this new deal, we don't know if it's going to go through because it is a very, very complicated deal. He's got a lot of talking to do. Whereas with the Qataris, because their deal's a lot more simple, boom, up your bid, the club is yours. You know, and I just want the Qataris to up their bid. Please, please let us get rid of these Glazers. And I, I get why the Qataris aren't upping their bid. They've literally given us, they've given the Glazers over five billion for this club, which needs at least two billion on the stadium and facilities. It needs at least another billion to clear the debt that is falling apart. That's an absolute mess. Their offer is more than fair, so I don't blame the Qataris for not upping their bid, but they need they need to, I think. That's the only way it moves. So, yeah, as it stands, basically, he said that both groups are really advanced. Uh, other reports, some reports are saying that Qatar are in the lead, some reports are saying Sir Jirak is in the lead, but at the end of the day, the, all the Qataris need to do is up their bid, so Jirak would have to negotiate some things. It remains to be seen. So, again, it's a takeover update, but I don't think it is particularly interesting, partic particularly relevant, to be honest. I think we're just going to sit here in the, in the takeover like with the stalemate for a while, which is annoying. But anyway, let's hope we get some positive news tonight. I will be back tonight with any news that comes out during the day. Please do hit that like button, subscribe down below if you're new, share the video. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.